Hello, welcome to Digital Campus's Level Up, a weekly video, well hopefully weekly, we're only human after all, but that's beside the point. Uh, we hope that these videos will inspire and equip you to make a lasting impact on your campus. Uh, so join with us as we seek to live out Christ's great commission. Let's do this. In this first video, I want to paint you a picture. Well, not a real picture because I'm a terrible painter. Except that one time in fourth grade, they hung that picture on the wall. But, back to painting you a metaphorical picture of the journey that we have um, ahead of us. We're all on a quest. Now, that quest looks radically different for all of us. But in the end, it, it all comes to the same goal. And do you know what that goal is? Our goal is to enter into the glory of God and spend the rest of our lives with Him in heaven. Uh, more simply put, it's to become a saint. Um, now, how do you become a saint, or what does it even mean to become a saint? Well, the good news is, is there's no single way. There's no one way to sainthood. There's a unique way for each and all of us to enter into sainthood. Um, and what's great is that the Lord doesn't want another St. John Paul. He doesn't want another St. Francis. He doesn't want another St. Therese. He wants a St. You. He wants a St. Luke. He wants us to be our own people and to, to live out the call that, that He has placed in our heart. And He doesn't want us to do it alone either. He wants us to bring as many people with us as possible. He wants a big old party in His Father's house and everyone's invited. Here at Focus, we live this out by following in the footsteps of Christ, by looking at what He said and did and the way that He lived His life. So now we're going to head over with my friend Christian to the library and see what the Gospel of Matthew has to say. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Now you might be thinking, what's Jesus talking to these 12 Jews on a mountain got to do with me in 2016? I realize I'm dating this video, but you get the point. Well, Pope Paul VI in the mid-70s dealt with that in the same way that the church has always dealt with that, when he said, The command of the Twelve to go out and to proclaim the good news is also valid for all Christians. Moreover, the good news is meant for all people of all times. Those who have received the good news and who have been gathered by it into the community of salvation can and must communicate and spread it. Not a lot of wiggle room there. Back to you, Luke. Thanks, Christian. This is Christ's Great Commission that we make disciples of all nations. Now we're going to dive deeper into this verse next week, but for right now, let's look at the big picture. How did Christ live his life? How did he make disciples? How did he start a global church, the church that we are a part of today? Um, well, being God is definitely helpful in that regard, but outside of that, he came and he invested in 12 men, deeply, intimately. He invited them into authentic friendship, walked with them, taught them, inspired them, and then sent them out to do the same. It seems crazy that today the Catholic Church boasts over one billion people, and it all started with 12 guys. Like, not all-stars, not like super cool guys, cream of the crop, like super basic guys. Like fishermen, tax collectors, sinners, pumpkin spice latte basic, just like you and me. But what did Christ do? He took these 12 men, and he basically, he took them camping for three years, which is not what I'm recommending you do, but the principles are there that because Christ was able to share with them so deeply his life, he was able to send them out to do that with others. This is a principle here in Focus that we call spiritual multiplication. The art of making disciples. Who make disciples? Who make disciples? Who make disciples who then create one billion Catholic people? Now I know that was a lot to throw at you and it's hard to think about you know, 2,000 years of church history and how it all started, but that's okay. Spiritual multiplication is a topic that we're going to come back to early and often, so, so don't get too overwhelmed. Let's break it down into simpler terms. You might be on a campus thinking, Luke, there's 15,000 students or more on my campus. I can't just reach 12. What, what about the rest? And to that I'd say, it's a really good question. You have a lot of good questions. I'm going to have Caitlin break it down a little bit more, so let's head on over to the lab. Well, Luke, it's pretty simple. Let's look at the whiteboard. Let's look at student A. Student A gets to campus and immediately at the beginning of the semester starts investing in five students and then next semester starts investing in five other students. At the end of the year, the student has reached out to 10 students. At the end of four years, that student has reached out to 40 students, which is great. 
But let's look at a different way of doing it. Let's look at student B. When student B gets to campus, that student also invests in students. But instead of five each semester, invests in two for the whole year. Not only does student B invest in these two, but that student teaches those students how to invest in two, and so on and so forth. So at the end of four years, student B's investment more or less reaches a yield of 31. So 31 is less than 40, so right now our example doesn't work, but just wait one minute. Let's look at at the end of five years. Let's assume that student A has graduated in four years. At the end of five years, student A's yield remains at 40. But because student B invested in two, who invested in two, who invested in two for five years, even after student B has graduated, that yield becomes 63. So not only has student B invested in more students, more eternal souls, but student B has helped create a culture of discipleship, of deep authentic friendships, and teaching those students how to go and do the same. And you can trust me, because I'm a doctor. Right. It's amazing what we can do when we invest deeply in a few. And what's even crazier is, if you took that same model, and instead of investing in two students initially, you invested in three, you would bring that total up to 81 students over the course of four years. That's what I'm talking about right there. Of course, this is a long-term plan, and it takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of struggle. There will be obstacles. And of course, the Holy Spirit needs to be involved. But it works, and it's beautiful. And you might be thinking, okay, Luke, I'm in. But now what? That's a good question, and it's a journey. And sometimes the ride is just enjoyable as a destination. So let's take it one step at a time, and we're going to head out onto campus with Deanna just to give you some practical tips of how to begin this quest. Thanks, Luke. Um, my first two years on campus, I was a missionary at Seed Boulder, where there were over 30,000 students. So as you can imagine, it was really overwhelming. Here are three things, aside from drinking copious amounts of coffee, that helped me to make disciples at CU. So prayer is the first step and the most important part in becoming a saint. We shouldn't be afraid to pray for our great desires and have the courage to fulfill the Great Commission. One of my favorite quotes from St. Therese is, God would never inspire me with desires which cannot be realized. In spite of my littleness, I can hope to be a saint. Um, so another important aspect is being intentional. Every encounter that you have with somebody is important, and even the smallest encounters can have eternal weight. So keep your head up, meet people, ask questions, and get involved. The more people that you know, the more opportunities you have to find disciples. Lastly, invitation. Don't hesitate to invite people into your life, whether it's to grab coffee, go on a run, or even to mass. Don't be afraid. Eternity is worth the awkwardness. So worth it. And trust me, awkwardness is like my second language. But the great news is, is that God is so much bigger than our fears and our anxieties. So let's do this. Let's become saints. Let's bring as many people with us as we can. Join Digital Campus on this journey as we pursue spiritual multiplication. Come back next week as we talk more and more as we go along about how do we do this? How do we pray? How do we invite people? How do we reach out to people? And I want to end with a quote by uh, St. John Vianney, who said, Not all the saints started well, but they all ended well. So let's end well. Thanks for watching Digital Campus's Level Up series. We hope you enjoyed every second of it, literally every single second. If any of the seconds were not up to par with your standards, please leave us a comment. Or if there's anything that you really would like us to talk about, or tips, or encouragement, whatever you want, please comment below. And uh, join us next week as we dive into the scriptures that we at Focus use to really drive home spiritual multiplication. See you next time.